And then finally we have the, the final piece of the puzzle. This involves some advanced future medical technology, which I think will look an awful lot like nanomedicine because that's one of the things we study. And if you have this advanced technology, then you should be able to revive someone from cryopreservation. If you're interested in more uh, information about this, there is a recent article in Cryonics magazine that Rob and I wrote on uh, a cryopreservation revival scenario using MNT. And the basic concepts are pretty simple. The basic concepts first is that medical nanorobots can operate at low temperature. So they can function quite happily in liquid nitrogen. They could function quite happily in liquid helium. They could function quite happily in the mythical zero kelvins. These devices have been designed uh, by and large so that they function without the need for solutions like water. They are not solution based and as a consequence you don't need liquid water or liquid anything in order to function and they can. Uh, also another thing is if you cryopreserve someone you cool them off. Once they are cooled when you come to revive them you should carry out at least the initial analysis and repair at low temperature because when you warm someone who has been cryopreserved if you do it in a, you know, a straightforward naive way there will be additional damage and there seems no particular reason to incur that damage if you can avoid it which you can by carrying out the initial analysis and repair at low temperature. So there's a sort of a discussion of how this would work and what the procedures would be. The obvious thing is to use the circulatory system. Now if you're at low temperature the circulatory system is filled with well whatever it was that was used to cryopreserve you. It's probably frozen or cold or solid in some force, some, uh, <clears throat> uh, some way. So the first thing you do is you excavate that and this is going to look more like uh, drilling. So you have molecular machines that can uh, excavate the circulatory system and then gain access to the entire tissue. And you now have devices in place throughout the system and you can install the needed repair infrastructure, which means com computational power, communications power, devices able to carry out localized repair specific to the particular area. You need to carry out an analysis of exactly what's going on. You have this large computer sitting by the patient and this large computer will have highly detailed information about what's going on and then it can carry out the repair in situ once you have repaired the structure, you can remove the necessary infrastructure that was engaged in the repair, warm the patient up, and they wake up and see the new day. I really want to convey to you the fact we're not talking about a little bit of an improvement in medical technology. We're not talking about, oh, we're going to use things that are a nice incremental improvement. We're going to do things in some way that's similar. We're talking about a basically, fundamentally more powerful medical technology. And I thought to convey this fact, I would show you this image. If you want to restore a damaged photograph using digital techniques, you can restore heavily damaged photographs. There's a huge difference in the technical capabilities and when you apply digital restoration you get a much better result. This is what we're going to be able to do. Lots of computer power, lots of very precise molecular technology able to precisely alter and change the structure and restore it and do a really good job. That's what we're going to be able to do. All right, so what is cryonics today? In a very literal sense, cryonics is an experiment. The proposal on the table is to try to use future medical technology to revive someone who is cryopreserved today. The correct experiment to evaluate this proposal is to select N subjects. It's always N. I'm not quite sure where this tradition got started, but it's always N. Cool them 
using the best currently available technology, wait for however long it takes, whether it's decades or a century or more than a century, for this advanced medical technology to be developed, and then see if the medical technology of 2100 can indeed revive them. That's the correct experiment to evaluate cryonics. And you might notice that there is an issue here, which is if you are thinking about it, we don't have the outcome of the clinical trials available for you to use in your decision. This is inherent in the proposal. So the correct que answer to the question, does cryonics work, is, well, come back in 100 years and we'll give you a reliable answer. In the meantime, um, what decision do we make? Well, first off, you've seen this one or something very similar. We know that cryopreservation is not a process of utter destruction. In fact, it's a process that has excellent preservation of a whole range of cellular structures. We know this because it is possible to cool and warm a wide range of tissues successfully. So we are preserving a lot of structure. And if structure is the critical thing required to make this work, then we have evidence that we are doing a pretty good job at preserving that structure. And again, you've seen this. Vitrification is the recent advance. Obviously, as the cryopreservation technology gets better, there's less and less damage. There's less damage to repair. Ultimately, if there's no damage, you will just be able to warm people up and they'll be healthy and happy and functional. Well, we aren't there yet, but as we get better and better, the risk that the cryopreservation technology will cause some horrible, irreversible damage that could never be repaired, that risk is getting ever smaller as time goes by. And I have to confess, when I look at the quality of the cryopreservation that can be done today, I have to look at it and I have to say, you know, I think that that is good enough given the kind of repair technologies that I think are going to be available in the future. I think it's more than good enough to allow us to revive people and have them be healthy, happy, and, you know, all the other adjectives you can apply.